from a rape bone base coat, starting with the wood, base coat all the wooden areas with dryad bark. Then shade all of these areas using null oil. For the wood grain effect, start with long, slightly uneven lines running the lengths of the wooden beams. Um, the reason is a shortcut here, it's just take your time with it. Try not to have the paint too thin so that a line that's painted doesn't need to be overpainted again. Also, I started by picking out the areas with obvious indented detail on the model, so highlighting kind of the edge of those, and then filling in almost the blanker areas with parallel lines of Gorthor Brown. You could add a second thinner highlight of Rackarth Flesh um, to kind of sell the effect. To be honest, if you stick with just the Gorthor lines, it'll look absolutely fine. Um, when picking out the areas for the lighter second highlight, um, sharper edges and kind of the middle of any of the thicker lines um, are probably the best places to pick out. Again, there isn't a quick way of doing it. Just take your time and try not to paint too many areas with Rackarth Flesh. You can always overpaint with the Gorthor Brown to reduce the size of some of these lines. Of particular note, the corners of the wooden beams are good places to pick out with these rack earth flesh highlights. The skeleton is painted then with skeleton horns, and I managed to film almost none of it. Once this is dry, use Agrax Earthshade to do fine recess shading of the deeper details in the model. Um, there's two real techniques for this. One would be to do straight recess shading with pure Agrax Earthshade. So as you can see in the spaces between the ribs, um, kind of around the, the, the sharp edges of the joints and the fingers. But then for areas like the brow of the skull, um, thin it down a little bit and more glaze it on so that the transition from light to dark isn't as stark. Skeleton is then highlighted using Screaming Skull. This is a mix of sharp edge highlights on the more prominent areas, so um, edges of bones and the like, using pretty much undiluted Screaming Skull. But in areas such as the flat at the top of the skull, it's best to thin it down to almost a glaze and do multiple thin layers so that there's a smooth transition. The glazing stage didn't really come out in this video, but if you want to see a more clear example, please find the link to a tutorial above. For the rope, base coat first with Steel Legion Drab.
shade the entire rope with Agrax Earth Shade. Highlight the raised areas with Carrick Stone. In some parts, particularly on the top of the wooden plank, it's not very well defined where the individual turns of rope are, but you can just blob in Carrick Stone to give the impression of these separations. Shade the paper nailed to the gallows with Seraphim Sepia. Highlight the sharper edges with Screaming Skull. You could also use Thin Screaming Skull to pick out the raised areas, such as the centre of this bit of paper. Just give a bit of variation to the finish. For the vines underneath, base coat first with Castellan Green. Shade the green areas with Ethonian Camel Shade. Finish them with a highlight of Elysian Green. Paint the nails in the gallows and the nail in the pamphlet with lead belcher, and then a highlight is shown using Stormo Silver. You could shade these with non-oil in between steps, but because they're so small, there's really no need. To give the impression of text on the pamphlet, use thin to band black and basically squiggle horizontal lines as fine as possible. Um, you could spend a lot of time to make this part more interesting using different designs if you'd like. I decided to add a red X to the bottom right corner of the parchment and maybe signifying that this was a bounty that's been claimed. And this is the finished result. If you like this tutorial, please check out my channel where I have several other Car City tutorials and other painting tutorials as well.